Welcome to another session of Six Patterns Diagnostic Videos. I'm Kevin. And I'm Max. So, Max, what do you have for us today? Today, we have a case from a 36-year-old female. And the only history we're given with this case is that this is not her first time visiting the pulmonologist. In fact, she has visited the pulmonologist multiple times with recurrent respiratory tract infections since she can remember, she says. Wow. And the imaging studies show extensive bilateral infiltrates, and there is no real upper or lower lobe predilection. She's got some bronchiectasis. Wow. So they decided <clears throat> to forego other techniques and get a surgical lung biopsy, hoping to get a definitive answer from you guys. Well, of course, they did a transbronch first, and it was signed out as some chronic inflammation and a little of that and granuloma and right. can't rule out sarcoid and maybe infection. So the transbronch wasn't helpful, so they went to a surgical lung biopsy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's an unfortunate thing, but sometimes it's the way to sort of um, initiate the process of getting a whole bunch of experts to look at your case, right? If you're a patient, get a lung biopsy, and you can send it all over the country. You can That's send true. it to Europe if you want. That's true. You can send it to Canada. And pretty soon you can scan it and send it everywhere instantaneously. In fact, you can send it to five experts at the same time. That's of course, true. you might get five different answers. That's the problem. You probably but will get five different right. answers. Unless you send it to us, you always get the right answer. Okay. So this surgical lung biopsy, it hits your microscope eight o'clock in the morning. And you look and you say, finally, I got a nice ILT. Exactly. And, it, and it's not one of those fibrosing ones that are impossible, right? This one, you look at it, low power, it's blue, it's an ILD. You know you're going to come up with some sort of definitive answer yeah. when you look at this. Yeah. So you, you probably, something that pop into your head is something like non-specific interstitial pneumonia. Non -specific. Speaking of specific diseases... Uh, you know, that's one of those pathways down the rabbit hole. We go with NSIP. It's true. But it is kind of blue, and the parenchyma is involved everywhere. It's diffuse. It's and diffuse. It's blue. And it's got some nodules. So the nodules, to me, kind of are a little bit odd for NSIP. Yeah. Unless they're lymphoid follicles. I mean, well pure formed germinal lymphoid centers. lymphoid follicles. Yeah. yeah. True. But if they're not pure germinal centers and lymphoid follicles, then I'm kind of thinking... Maybe this is not standard nonspecific interstitial pneumonia. Right. Whatever that is. But as you'll see in the end of this video, you may still end up wanting to use the term NSIP if you have no clinical information. You might call it an NSIP-like pattern with some features that suggest two, three, four possibilities. True. So should we... Take a look and see what is at higher power here. Yeah, I would like, go to the nodules, like Willie Sutton to the what, bank. What's creating this yeah. NSIP-like pattern? Yeah. Well, we know they're lymphocytes. There's definitely a bunch of lymphocytes in here. And there's macrophage nuclei, which you get enough of them together, and kind of mixed pink and blue. I'm kind of a simple person with the color since we only have two. We only got two to deal with, so yeah. you wanted to see one of those nodules. Let's yeah. Look at, oh, there's a beautiful nodule right wow. there. Wow. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Well, th this is a great nodule because I hope all of you out there are looking at this and saying, my God, that looks like a granuloma. It kind of looks like a granuloma. It's vague. Yeah. Those are the worst kind. It's the pulmonary pathologist type of granuloma. Yeah. And just so we're all clear, there's definitely granulomas in here. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Now that is a granuloma. Now that's not a sarcoid granuloma, right? I mean, it's not hard enough not at all. Well defined enough, but it's clearly, I think everyone would agree. That you see that giant cell there? Is a granuloma. Everyone loves that. That's a granuloma. Yeah. Okay, so we've definitely got granulomas, and some of them wow. are beautiful. Yeah. And actually, it's this is an interlobular septum, right. and that's a lymphatic. And it, doesn't it's sarcoid have perilymphatic? Perilymphatic granulomas? So yeah. this has to be sarcoid. Mm. So. For me, sarcoid would be at the end of a very long list, and I'd probably let but it drop off. this is off. a granulomatous disease. How can you not have sarcoid on too, the differential diagnosis? Too many lymphocytes. And so if you ever see a case you think is sarcoid and it looks this blue at low magnification, you're barking up the wrong tree. 
It's not sarcoid. And can you imagine your pulmonologist surprised when you call them and tell them it's a uh, granulomatous disease process and I can tell you it's not sarcoidosis. Yeah. They won't believe you. No. But you'd be 100% correct. Yeah, so we've got a highly lymphocytic process that has discrete, small, non-necrotizing, poorly formed granulomas. Agree with that? Non-necrotizing, poorly formed granulomas. That sounds to me like hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Sounds a ton. Like you would read in the definition in your textbook. Exactly. And you'd read vague, non-necrotizing granulomas with a robust lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate in the background. That is hypersensitivity pneumonitis. But so, why is this not exactly? I was going to say. So how do we get our, get away from hypersensitivity here? Remember, she's young, so she could have a bird. Thirty six, thirty four. Yeah. Well, old people can have birds. Yeah, they can. But something about having birds in your middle of your life, young, in late teenage to middle thirties, forties, seems to be the prime time. Now, maybe if you had birds and they made you sick, you got rid of them. So by the time you're fifty. You know better than to have a bird. And it's not everyone who has a bird who gets it. So it's true. It's a weird uh, dance, if you will, between exposure and the body's reaction. But this looks to me, I got to tell you, too lymphoid. Too Believe lymphoid. Not, yeah. So perhaps you're thinking this is L I P. Yeah. So lymphoid interstitial pneumonia or lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia. I mean, you, describe you, both ways. Yeah, describe both ways. And if you look at the de definitions, you're going to find all the features you see here. Granulomas? Yes. Yes. Diffuse infiltrates? Lymphoid infiltrate? Yes. yes. Small lymphocytes? Yes. Nothing obviously malignant. No sheets of monomorphous lymphocytes. So now we're saying that LIP and hypersensitivity and NSIP may actually share features. Well, how helpful is that? I don't think we're helping anybody so far. Yeah, but we're going to, by the end of this video, we're going to help we you. We will. Because we'll, this is not UIP. We'll get there. <laughs> it's definitely not UIP. Okay, and so LIP, right, most, the last classification of interstitial lung disease relegated LIP to the very rare idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. And a lot of people think that LIP in and of itself actually doesn't exist. Right. Because you... If you ask people, what's your definition of LIP versus NSIP, they say, well, if I think about lymphoma when I look at the biopsy, but it's not lymphoma, I diagnose LIP. But if I don't think about lymphoma, I diagnose NSIP. See, these are crazy. Oh. These are crazy things. But it is true that when there's enough lymphocytes in the biopsy, like this case, I think low-grade lymphoproliferative disease has to be the number one diagnosis of exclusion. So You have to work this up. You have to work it up. And how far you go with the workup is up to you. I think what you don't want to see is all of these being B cells. Absolutely. So CD3, CD20. At a minimum. Maybe a kappa and lambda and side hybridization. Check out that population of plasma yep. cells. Yep. I think those are really good basic approaches before you send it to your hematopathologist. I mean, some people will send it to the hematopathologist right away, but the lung, low-grade lymph lymphoproliferative disease is very hard for hematopathologists because remember, they'll tell you it's not a lymph node. <laughs> so, we get our work up on this case, mostly CD3 positive T cells. Nice. There's some scattering of CD20 positive B cells, particularly in a few little aggregates, but nothing concerning for an infiltrative B-cell neoplasm. Kappa and lambda and side hybridization actually shows a relative paucity of plasma cells, but they are polyclonal, kappa and lambda. But there's not a ton of them. Right. And there's no dominant inversion. And there's no dominant no inversion. Okay, well, now we're left with, I, I'm still worried about infection. I think you have to be in this case. Low-grade mycobacterial infection, MAC, for example, hot tub lung. AFB or amine rhodamine stains, yeah. negative. Yeah. Still doesn't good. exclude it, but right. it's good we did it. Right. GMS stains, negative. Right, good. I think you got to do that with granulomas. I don't do them in sarcoid cases, I'll tell you right now, but this sarcoid is a different animal. It's a completely different picture. One day we'll do a video on that. We will. 
So we're left with a diffuse lymphocytic predominant infiltrate with innumerable poorly formed granulomas that are kind of all over the place. Some are in the interlobular septae, some are in the interstitium, some almost appear airspace. Yep. They don't have a real accentuation in the central lobular regions. And you know what else? We don't have any granulomas in the pleura here. The pleura is abnormal, by the way, here. This is thick. Pleura is thickened. So inflammatory diseases of the pleura that also affect the lung, right? We have pleural thickening and lung parenchymal changes, often are systemic diseases. Just a pearl for you guys. Just something to think about. So I look at that absence of well-formed granulomas in the pleura is an argument against, again, sarcoid. Again, Because totally lymphatics agree. in the pleura should have yep. granulomas around them if it's sarcoid. Cool. So we don't know what this is, what you're telling me. Well, so we've come up with a descriptive diagnosis, yeah. right? Yeah. And at this point, this is where the pulmonary pathologist has to do something that might be uncomfortable. Get on the phone. And you might have to reach out and make a phone call and learn a little bit more about this patient. Right. And I think if you are at the point where you can say you've got a diffuse lymphocytic infiltrate with multiple non-necrotizing granulomas and you don't think it's sarcoid, that's a great place to start the conversation. Yep. So we get on the phone and we say, tell me a little more about this history. 34 year old female, multiple recurrent infections since she was a child if you go back multiple recurrent infections i'll bet you if you google what you just said it'll come up with a diagnosis in this case and sure enough she has hypo gamma globulins right so she has a diagnosis of common variable immunodeficiency syndrome so that the whole thing crystallizes instantly and now we have a name we can put on it we can sound really smart even though nobody knows what it is, but at least the clinician says, okay, I get that. I've got a patient with common variable immunodeficiency with diffuse infiltrates, and you're telling me the patient has granulomatous hyphen lymphocytic interstitial lung disease. In parentheses, G-L-I-L-D. Now you look like a genius, but you had to have that information. Now, Max might look at this biopsy and include in his differential without any clinical history. This can also be seen in patients who have known common variable immunodeficiency. Right. Now, some people hate the term because GLILD encompasses a variety of pathologic patterns, including granulomatous pneumonitis, lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia, LIP, follicular bronchiolitis, and every combination you can think of thereof. So this case has a combination of lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia pattern and granulomatous pneumonitis type pattern. And so the term GLILD works great for this, but what if you have a case that's prominent follicular bronchiolitis? What if you have a case that's just prominent granulomas? So pathologists sometimes reject this term because they say, well, it doesn't really accurately describe the process. But Clinicians know exactly what this term means. This is a non-infectious consequence of common variable immunodeficiency and other immunodeficiencies. And it's a manifestation that they understand and they know how to approach. And so in communicating with your clinical colleagues, it's actually a great term. Right. And, you know, they, some people are speculating this is HHV8 as an infection viral infection in a patient who's got an altered immune system. So right. I think we will eventually discover what this is. But for the moment, I think your recognizing and having watched this video takes you out of being the ordinary garden variety pathologist to level one or level two pulmonary pathologist. If you can expert. make this diagnosis, you're at the expert, expert level. Expert level, for sure. Great. All right. Great case of GLILD. Uh, Give us your comments below. Let us know if you like this case and uh, we'll see you next time.